along the way. Yes, and perfect timing. As Abby was mentioning, we just get our announcement that we're going to be reporting this. So if anything you missed or you want to refer back to something or you want to refer this to someone, we will have a recording of this session uh, and if uh, and we'll still be collecting people as we go. Uh, my name is Brian Berenger. I am the program facilitator for the Cypreneur Challenge. Uh, I've had the pleasure of being involved in this program for six years now and facilitating this is my third year. First few years, I was a mentor, which was uh, very enjoyable to work with businesses. And that's what I do uh, kind of as my full-time job is I, I coach businesses and founders and help them become successful. I also create curriculum and do accelerator programs like this. So this is a kind of the, the fun time for me. Uh, it seems strange maybe to others, but teaching people and carrying them through this process uh, is, is a great enjoyment of mine and, and then doing it in this kind of mode for something like this in Tennessee uh, is all the better. It's just uh, makes it for, you know, like a, a five layers of icing on top of the cake. So what we're going to do tonight is the info session. We're going to talk to you all about the program. We'll go through the structure of the program in a pretty high level, as well as the dates of the program. Mostly, this is also for a time for those to have any questions to be able to present those and we'll answer anything we have. Uh, we'll start this program formally next week. We'll talk about the IP parade and what to expect there. And we'll also talk about your commitment and what to expect along this next 10 weeks as we move through the Cypreneur Challenge. Now, one thing to go ahead and say is that we're combining two of these programs together, the 10 Smart Program, which is a smart mobility program with the Cypreneur Challenge, but we're not going to be combining the, the actual, uh, you know, crossing over the efforts in ways that one will impact the other in a negative way, right? We'll keep the streams different, even though we have two verticals, we have the life sciences, and we have the automotive, but much of what we teach here is all about business. So as we go through this week for week, and we have our mentors, except for a couple of our mentors, They'll be pretty homogeneous across the board, and we'll all learn from those mentors as well as the education that we do from week to week. And then in those areas where it's more um, specific around the verticals, we'll split off into those teams. We have a, a ton of great intellectual property. We have over nine pieces of intellectual property across the state of Tennessee, and I'll explain why that is here in a minute. Uh, and we have a lot of participants that are signing up to be our founders, and that's a main part of our program here. Uh, kind of our little saying is, is we supply the IP along with our partners and they supply the founder spirit and the time and effort to build businesses around that IP. So the tonight we're going to be talking mostly about the Cypreneur Challenge and then we'll talk about some of the other events as we go along. Uh, the Cypreneur Challenge is sponsored and brought to you by BioTN and I'm going to hand it over to Abby Trotter right now who's got the most history in this regard and it's going to kind of give us the background on the Cypreneur Challenge and BioTN. Sure. Thank you so much, Brian. And I'm so excited about this program and uh, what is going to come out of it. Um, first of all, BioTN is uh, the um, workforce development and entrepreneurship development uh, partner of Life Science Tennessee. So Life Science Tennessee is an industry association uh, made up of about 120 uh, industry members across the state that does networking and um, ad policy and advocacy work. And BioTN is the partner that really gets into building the jobs and building the economics of, uh, of, um, of the life sciences across our state. Um, uh, Life Science Tennessee began partnering with BioTN, uh, I believe in early 2021, and it has been a terrific partnership. BioTN is also a great partner of uh, Launch Tennessee, and we receive a significant amount of funding, state funding uh, from the organization Launch Tennessee, just to do these kinds of programs. We are trying to build more life science jobs in the state and, uh, and more life science businesses in the state. So programs like this that help commercialize technologies out of our universities is exactly the sweet spot uh, that BioTN is in. And let me just tell you, if you, um, uh, uh, haven't been engaged or haven't um, uh, heard much about Cypreneur in the past, um, <clears throat> Brian does an incredible job of coaching um, uh, graduate students across Tennessee and how to, um, how to take a piece of technology and turn it into a business um, and make a pitch for funding. 
as a matter, and he does it very well. As a matter of fact, he does it so well uh, in one of the cohorts from last year, one of the um, one of the technologies that came out of the University of Tennessee. Uh, it was a it was a, a technology called Kronos LNP. Uh, and uh, a graduate student uh, out of Vanderbilt was assigned that technology. Her name was Jennifer Zachary with a couple of other people. And uh, she ended up um, really helping the, 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 the PI, the principal PI out of UT, um, turn that piece of technology into a business and uh, Trey Fisher is his name. He's the C uh, He's now the CEO of the organization. Uh, I believe she is still helping him and the organization is called Orion Therapeutics. And they were just selected uh, a few months ago into Mass Bios Accelerator uh, up, in, up in Boston. So some great things are coming out of this program and uh, I look forward to seeing what's gonna come out that doesn't happen every time, I will say, but it's terrific when it does, because this is really just this is really a, just a training ground uh, to get you interested in um, in uh, entrepreneurship and also to showcase some of the great technology that we have going on in the state. And I'm just super excited that uh, that Brian uh, has taken on this role. Like I said, he's a great teacher and a great mentor. And, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. So anyway, I'll turn it back over to you, Brian. And, and I, I, I ought to recognize Tom Ballard. We were talking uh, before, before the call or as people were gathered in the call. Tom Ballard is a board member of Life Science Tennessee, a strong supporter of commercialization programs like this that happen throughout the state. Uh, he runs a blog. If you're not... Uh, if you're not a subscriber on that blog, you should be. And it's he's got the blog name right behind you. It's technovation.biz. And it's all kind of all technology news and entrepreneurship news from across Tennessee. So thank you so much, Tom, for being here. Thanks, Abby. Appreciate it. All right. Well, we'll jump off, Brian. Back to you. Thanks, Abby. Uh, and I mean, that was a, a great rundown, a great background of why we do this. Thank you very much for the kind words you said about me. It really is a, a, a passion play of mine. I, I enjoy doing this. And I think the you know, where I'll pick up is that word entrepreneurship. That is something that I've spent a lifetime, a third generation entrepreneur. I was never given a choice to be anything other, and I never wanted another choice. Uh, I'm the type of person that says I'd rather work 80 hours for myself than ever have to go work 40 hours punching a clock somewhere. And that's just the mentality I have. That's not the mentality that is the key to success for being an entrepreneur, although it is an important kind of element. It's not the only element. So when you're thinking about entrepreneurship, I always like to think of the definition in this, that entrepreneur is someone who jumps off a cliff and builds a plane on the way down. That is true. And some of us are a little bit more gung-ho about it than others. Some of us are willing to quit our jobs on a Tuesday for nothing more than the fact that we have an idea that we can't get out of our head and we start that business on a Wednesday. Sometimes entrepreneurs are more uh, born out of necessity because of different life events, layoffs and other things. We've seen entrepreneurship really skyrocket over the last several years because of the pandemic, because of the layoffs and furloughs, people realizing they can go do their own businesses and make their own mailbox money and do a lot of things. So entrepreneurship is easier than ever to get into. And there's a ton of money and a ton of programs, especially from the government that help entrepreneurs. So even though it can be scary and I won't try to take away this, the fear factor of entrepreneurship, it is kind of like jumping off a cliff and trying to figure out how to build a plan on the way down, but it doesn't have to be that way. Especially if you're a single founder, it can be very, very scary, but that's not how we do things. We kind of train the program around having a team of founders. So it's not always feeling like, hey, you're the only one. If the crash lands at the bottom, that's a bad thing. Just know that if you, that happens, it's a learning experience and you'll be there with a the team. What I like to actually think of entrepreneurship is a little bit more extensive definition. Uh, entrepreneurship is an attempt to create value. And that's a very important word. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute too. Through recognition of business opportunity, the management of risk taking appropriate to the opportunity and through the communicative, and I always mess up this word, the communicative and management skills to mobilize human financial material resources necessary to bring a product to fruition. To mess up on the word communicative every single time on the first one is pretty ironic, but it happens every time. So anyway, this is a more thorough definition of what I'm talking about. This is talking about amassing all the resources, both talent and skills, 
the management process, the financial side of things, the material resources, everything you need to solve a problem. But you also have to know how to solve a problem and who to solve the problem for. And that's what we really spend a lot of time doing in the program. So what is the purpose of the Cypreneur Challenge? Our focus is around commercialization. That's why I'm here. And that's what Abby was referring to earlier. I spent a lot of time working with organizations, especially over here in West Tennessee and Memphis area. We have a lot of life sciences, but we have a lot of life sciences across the entire state. Very much of a life sciences organization, uh, life sciences uh, region is what I should say. The problem with commercialization a lot of times is not for lack of desire or lack of, of intent. It's for lack of focus and lack of workforce development more than anything else. Our institutions, our organizations, our universities of Memphis, the University of Tennessee networks, the Vanderbilts, the Oak Bridges, the CETs, all these organizations, they're focused on research and we need them to be focused on research. The talent is focused on research. The priorities are all focused on research. Even the marketing and brand is focused on research. When University of Memphis reached Carnegie levels, we are all excited. When U2 does that, UT does that, we're all excited. That's all surrounded and oriented around the environment of research, which doesn't align itself to business, right? And so when you have the, you know, the, the business school over here, you have the research over here, there's not a lot of alignment and not a lot of our priority and all the funding from all the grants and all the other insta stuff goes towards the research. It's not going towards building a business. So it's difficult to do that for a variety of reasons. So what do we want to do about that? We want to change that. So what our program does is it takes intellectual property sponsored by our organizations, our partners. We spend a lot of time talking to them, great partnerships with all the organizations around the state. They help us sponsor the IP from their research labs and their research departments. And then we recruit a group of founders to build mock businesses and put them through a 10 week program to build out a viable marketable business concept for that intellectual property that we can carry on afterwards. So it's to advance and grow life sciences industry in Tennessee, that's really what we're doing, trying to get them out of the research and into the, into the market. As another goal of ours, as part of our program is also to connect startups with those institutions as well. So we wanna introduce the idea as we move more startups into more research and read also. So it's a very virtuous cycle that we're talking about. Complete statewide economic development, the more we do, the more we grow, the more we launch, the more we have access to federal funding alignment, private equity alignment, both of these are very, very important for our state. And also, as Abby was saying, you saw all over our mission statement, STEM aligned entrepreneurship. We want IP holders, researchers, postdocs, the engineers, everyone that we can possibly touch through this program and impact this program to leave with a little bit better understanding of what entrepreneurship is and how to cast off a business, build out a business or launch a business that is something viable to a market where customers are going to want to pay you for that product or that service. So all of that, not just STEM oriented, but STEM aligned entrepreneurship. That's what we're talking about here. So what is the BioT and Cypreneur Challenge? We started this several years ago. In fact, it started from students who wanted to do more and wanted to kind of challenge themselves in an entrepreneurial way, building around intellectual property, not just doing the research side of it, but also building up the business side of it. It formalized over time into this multi-week program where to coin kind of how we said, and I said this earlier, is an organization, BioTN in this case, the Academic Alliance, supplies by gathering and recruiting a bunch of intellectual property across the state from some major institutions like St. Jude and the others that I've mentioned. And then we recruit participants from those institutions, but also from the general public, and not the just usual suspects we try to recruit from the business schools and the art schools, anybody that we can that might be interested in becoming an entrepreneur, because those perspectives from those other disciplines are extremely important in building a well-rounded management team, founding team, and business that can align with the perspectives and be empathetic with the customer and understand value proposition. So we try to recruit a very well-rounded organization of, of recruits and participant founders to then form business teams that we then carry through 10 weeks of instruction, all culminating in the end in the Capstone Demo Day event where they're pitching in front of real investors, real key opinion leaders, real subject matter experts, and other people from the entrepreneurship ecosystem here in Tennessee, including our, our sponsors from Watch Tennessee and so on and so forth. So we have a lot that we do over this program. We cover a lot of topics as well. So we make sure that we understand what the product market fit. You might have a lot of cases. What we have is in these life sciences, IP areas is a solution to a problem. But that doesn't necessarily mean that translates to a viable financial market. 
uh, in this case, a market where there's someone is willing to buy the product. But there might be, in this case, the life sciences, certainly FDA and the 510K to have to jump through. And we talk about 510K in that process when we're talking about regulatory and compliance. There's uh, coding that has to be in there and precedent on your reimbursables. There's a lot of information that has to go along about bringing a healthcare product to a market, right? But if there is not a viable market to bring it to, those are just hoops that you might still jump through that might not be worth it in the end. Patents might even be something great for your product and it might actually limit your product. And that's something we talked about as well. Again, all these other areas of protection are actually moot if no one wants to buy your product. So if we can't figure out in the very early stages around the product market fit, how to solution, how to make sure the problem and solution are all framed properly together. And that there's a customer that's willing to pay the product, meaning there's value. And in this case, as I said earlier about value and coming back around to it, value is derived by two simple words. What pain can we alleviate? Pain being the one. And what gain can we provide? Gain being the second word. So pains and gains, that's how you provide value. And that's what we educate through this process. And we do that also with mentorship. So and it's not just me throughout this thing groaning on about entrepreneurship, which I can do every day of the week, unfortunately. It's just the way I am. You can go look at my YouTube and you can see me doing the same thing over and over again. It never gets old for me. But I like to also bring in other people that I know are key opinion leaders and knowledgeable people in the ecosystem as well to talk about other areas of entrepreneurship and that are much more deeply focused in some of these areas than I am. So we'll bring on mentors. We also have office hours. Uh, to help those people that need a little bit of extra help. So let's talk quickly about commitment as well. And then I'm about finished and we can open up for questions and answers. And if we've collected any questions in the uh, chat, we can go ahead and start doing this too. So if you have questions, uh, go ahead and start dropping them in the chat and we'll actually have an open format Q&A session here in a minute. So the commitment for the average participant, uh, remembering we're going to be forming teams of three to five people per company. Uh, having four to six pieces of intellectual property in the entire cohort going forward generally is what we do. So we'll have four or five teams of four or five, uh, usually not less than three. Five is a bit much, so four is our sweet spot, but we'll usually do three, so it's not on, all on just one or two people. Uh, it's three to five hours per week. We meet on a Thursday evening for two hours, uh, so that's two hours of that three to five hours. Then generally, there's some team-based homework that is an hour to three hours. I'll tell you, in the early stages, it's a couple hours worth of work. In the later stages, it's probably closer to three hours worth of teamwork as you're getting close to building out your narrative and working on your pitch and practicing for the, for the final event. But it's not bad. Three to five hours is not much for just the six or seven weeks after starting next week, heading into the demo day, and then, of course, the final event in, in itself. So... It's not a lot of commitment. We're not like that normal accelerator program where you might spend 10 hours a day for the first five weeks. This is just simply two hours of classroom commitment a week, plus uh, a couple of hours of, of either team or uh, personal homework each week to make sure you're keeping up with all the assignments that we have and the groundwork that we need you to cover in order to catch, uh, get all the data collected for each one of these points. All right, so let me see here where I'm at. Okay. So the last thing I wanted to go over real quick before we open up question and answers, and I'll leave this up on the screen uh, so people can digest this as we answer the questions, is what's the timeline? So we've done some adjustment, but not really on the psychonumeric side. So it should be pretty st st uh, standard to what we have already said if you've seen it before. Uh, tonight, we're doing the uh, Q&A session. Next week, we're going to have the IP parade. Uh, the IP parade, I'll go ahead and cover that, is simply every one of the IP holders is going to spend time uh, presenting their IP. So a few minutes presenting their IP with a few minutes of question and answers. Uh, and then after that, our participants will vote on the team or the IP that they want to work on, and then we'll form teams from those groups. So next week, we'll do the IP parade. Pretty exciting. We've got a lot of technology to discuss. It's a very interesting time for everybody, and uh, it's, a lot of, it's pretty enjoyable. So uh, we hope everyone shows up for that too. And then we start off with the classes for that period of time, going from the 9th of March all the way to the 20th of April with the 27th being our final pitch and demo day, and that will be a live event in Nashville. Uh, also offered virtually for those that can't make it, but all the other classes will be held virtually on Zoom in a session similar to this. Okay, so 
that's the deck I had to offer tonight. Just the basics of information. I probably allowed you to think and ponder on many areas of, of questions. If you have those, great. Uh, if, if I've done well enough and we don't, we can move forward. But please, let's go ahead and start talking and, and ask questions and see where it goes from there. Hello. Hi, my name is Matthew. Um, great. This, this seems like an awesome opportunity. Thank you for walking us through all this. Um, sure. so I was just curious, like, how big are the, have the cohorts been in the past? And sort of how big do you think this cohort is expected to be? Um, and, like, do you have a general idea of, like, distribution? Because I realize this is all, all across all the entire state, right? So um, do our teams yeah. like, pick based off of locality? Or are they just kind of randomly assigned? Um, that's a great set of questions. We have representation in IP from the entire, across the entire state, which has been great. So we've had from St. Jude and the University of Memphis all, all the way to UT Chat, Knoxville, UT, Vanderbilt, Oak Ridge. Uh, I, I'm sure I'm gonna fail to mention some people, but I don't mean to, it truly was a mass effort of IP that's provided from all points of the state of Tennessee and the surrounding. We even have one that's co-work between Tennessee and Alabama out of the Auburn University, uh, which is my own motto, and I promise not to provide any bias, give any bias to that. Uh, so the, then the other question was uh, uh, representation across the state of Tennessee, and then you also asked about, refresh my memory. Uh, I was just curious about like how teams were picked. I, I assume that they were, really, picked, like, right. are they like, are they like, could it be like, because I'm in Nashville, right? So would it be that other people on my team that I could like meet with in person or then like sort of virtually or is it, or do you guys just kind of assign um, just cohorts randomly? We actually let it, you pick. So after you've heard the intellectual property, we have a form that people will then say, hey, I like these, they'll rank them one, two, three. And in every session that we've done this for for the last four years, everyone's gotten either their first or second pick. It just has happened to work out like that. And the rare case that it wouldn't, we kind of negotiate that. And we, the, the idea there is we want people to work on the IP that they want to work on. Because the idea, obviously, is that if they want to work on it, they'll put the effort in, the passion in, and hopefully grow that passion into something that they might want to carry through afterwards. And that's what we want to hear as I'm going through the 10 weeks. I love hearing the conversations where people are like, hey, I really care about this product. Uh, I want to gear it forward. I mean, we've heard people say, look, how do I actually ask the IP holders if I can create this business with them, so on and so forth. So it's important for the process that you're given the choice to choose. Now, if there's a special, and we've got a few different scenarios coming on, a couple of our IPs are coming with very interested people that want to work in the, the cohort themselves too. I'm not going to take them off and move them to another IP, right? So the idea is we're going to have a little bit of mixtures of different things than we've had in the past. So I, I think it's one of those things where if we do have something that might be more regionally located and, and they, the team wants to do that, we can kind of entertain that conversation. But we do want to make sure that the desire and interest is there. So if it's not, you're just going to flake, you know, not you, Matthew, obviously, but just someone would lose interest over time. Things happen, priorities change, and all of a sudden we've lost you for the second half of the cohort. Got you. Thank. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great questions. I appreciate that. Thank you. Other questions? Hi, my name is Shannon Taylor. Uh, I'm a grad student at Vanderbilt. I just had a question and you kind of had, had hinted at this and like the really interdisciplinary um, nature of the program and of the people that are needed to make this stuff happen. Um, so I was just curious, like what um, types of students and, and people are involved in our, our parts of the cohorts? Because I've only heard about it from graduate students here, but but I'd love to know who else is, is usually involved. Well, I, that's a great question. Uh, and I'm going to ask for a, a shameless favor out of the answer. Like, if you know of anybody that I'm about to describe, then please pass the, our participation form along to them, because we are looking for a certain type of individual that you could probably throw a stone at and hit 10 people in your, on your average campus these days, right? It's not about being a, a person that's in the School of Business. And it's not about being a person in the School of Engineering uh, or any one set discipline. It's about being a person who wants to um, be their own boss, certainly monetize their own passion, uh, you know, really follow their own, their own course, 
uh, and is not willing to kind of deviate from that, right? Uh, so usually these are high achiever individuals uh, that are looking for uh, that next that next challenge, right? Um, it doesn't have to be from any one school though, right? And that's the thing is, and the, the beauty part about that is, is when you have these individuals from these different disciplines, they bring completely different lenses with, to, the, to the table with them. So their perspectives are different. Even though empathy is a, a common, def commonly defined thing, is their lenses of empathy are different. How they see perspective is different. So how they measure and, and understand value is different as well. So when you bring those multidisciplined people into the same group, then they can build off each other. Of course, doing it in a cohort style where we have teams working with teams, you get that too. And that's why we really made this a, a group cohort program. So I, I really can't describe that person. It's more probably someone you know that you can just go, oh yeah, that, that, that's, that's him or her or them. Uh, and you really then, you know, if you know those people, I'd love for you to pass this on. We're looking for someone also, I will say, you know, there's not necessarily an age limit because we have a sophomore that I've been talking to that seems like she's got the right level of experience and everything else to be a good contributing member. But we're undergrad, graduate students, postdocs, researchers. Uh, we've had professors be a part of this as well that weren't part of the research organization, but wanted to have the experience to go through it. So it's really anybody on the campus and this goes for anybody else too. I mean, we've taken several people from the public that weren't associated with schools whatsoever, former founders, founders that have exited, whether that's a good exit or a bad exit, founders that are just looking for that next line of, of income or that next business to join into or next industry. There's a lot of founders that are wanting to get into life sciences right now. So we're looking for those individuals too. So even in your personal world, if you know anyone, we'd love to entertain them coming on as a participant. Awesome, thank you so much for that. And I have one, one last question. I think there's a question in the chat as well, so I don't wanna take up too much time. But no, something, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, something that somebody else, others probably have a question about is like, I know right now, like all these dates are good for me except for one of them. Um, so what does that look like? Like, are we gonna still record the sessions and then work like on an individual basis if we know there's like some time we can't make it to one of the sessions? Yeah, so we try to accommodate this around semester start, semester end, dead weeks, dead days, exam days, graduations, and breaks. It is impossible to measure and, and match these around all the calendars for every university in the state of Tennessee, as you can imagine, right? Uh, so we do our best. We record every single session, and those are up on the channel on our YouTube channel, so you can go see those the next day, and they're up usually that night, if not the next morning. Exactly why? Because usually there's homework after, and we don't want to delay you from getting to with your team. And then you also have material that we supply. You have a toolkit that you'll have different forms and different, and we, they're different. We call them canvases. They're different little canvases that you'll use to draw out your information, to list your information. So you'll have all access to that. And you'll have the deck too. So the deck that I present from will also be in the Google Drive. We all have Google Drives. We'll have a drive for each one of you to put your information in. Uh, we've done this a few times. So finally, we've kind of got this process that really works. And there's plenty of access to information along the way uh, to help you. If you are going to be missing, that's also why we do it with, you know, three team to three, four and five. So you're not single threaded and your team can pull the weight. Uh, you have to pick up the weight again when you get back. I don't carry y'all's water. You carry your own water as you as you can imagine. But the idea there is like, you'll have plenty if you're working with your team, it shouldn't, it shouldn't cause a problem at all. I like to know when you're not gonna be there. Obviously, I mean, we treat this kind of like a, a class anyway. So as you would instruct a professor, letting a professor know that you're not gonna be there, it helps me keep everything managed along the way. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm really excited. Yeah, uh, me too. It's, it's going to be great. Okay, so we do have a question of Ugar in the chat. May I know the scheduled time for the final pitch? I'm assuming that means the demo day pitch. That event will start probably at the same time, six, and go to... Now, that event sometimes goes a little long, uh, depending on how the panel does their questions. We usually start at about 6.20 because we have a lot of up, uh, things at the beginning. To talk about our sponsors and everything else. The pitches will start about 6.20. If we have five teams, each team will take 10 minutes or so. So I'd say the presentations will start around 6.20 and they'll be over by 7.45 or so. But I plan on that final demo day being around 6 to 8 on that last Thursday, the 27th of April. 
And we want to encourage people, that's why we're doing in Nashville, encourage people to come, but that will not be a requirement. Hi, uh, my name is Wing Chen. Uh, I'm a graduate student at Vanderbilt. So um, uh, it's excited. Uh, thank you for the introduction. So um, I have two questions. So first is kind of follow-up questions like, um, I'm not sure I'm a fit for the program because I'm kind of pure researcher and never been exposed to business. And I'd just be interested in becoming an entrepreneur. So oh. I would just see, I would just want to figure out if I have a role in this, in the challenge. You're, you're my poster child of who I want to recruit. So, I mean, I love the idea and, and I am not a scientist and I couldn't punch my way out of a lab coat, right? And you're admitting to me that you don't know business and entrepreneurship. I want you to understand where my world is so I can help you understand if that's where you want to be with one foot in the science and one foot in the business in order to take what you know how to do very, very well to a place that's a viable market. So if you're up for the challenge, I love, and I have every year, we have dozens of researchers just like yourself that are, I mean, in some cases, shaking in the first class because they're afraid of what they don't know. And then when we kind of dispel the messaging a bit and the narrative of what is entrepreneurship and we break it down into logical chunks. And when I share with you in the first class, the fact that entrepreneurship is like the scientific method and i show you the points of how the scientific method actually follows how you do customer discovery and building value proposition then you start to realize there's commonality between the two and we talk about hypothesis and theories and testing and experimentation and observe observation and reporting and everything else you'll come to find that actually some of the disciplines you know are the same as a good business leader so if you're up for the challenge, I think it will be something that you'll actually might be more attuned to than you may even give you self credit for. Now, me, I'm hopeless on the lab side. So I give you more credit coming to my side than me coming to your side. Great. Thank you. And then my second question is like, I'm curious, like where are those like case come from? Like, cause I would assume like in each team, like it would take in care of like kind of one IP as their two case to um, for the challenge. Yeah, so we just I um because I have like kind of not really an IP yet. So we have uh my professor and I devised some device, medical device, and we um just last year submitted to CTTC of Vanderbilt, and then it's going through the like the patent process. And I'm personally interested in to see if they have potential in the real market. So um like that's like is that okay to bring the own IP not really yet to the competition or the challenge? <laughs> Believe it or not, you're not the first person to ask that. Uh, so here's several things in response to that. One is uh, our IP runs the gambit. And this year we're going to have actually some automotive and mobility IP in the mix as well, right? But on the life sciences side, we've had, we've had a lot of different things. We've had native pressure devices. We've had devices for, for SIDs. We've had devices for babies, skull, skull, you know, skull formation, we've had creams, we've had ointments, we've had uh, biomedical devices, we've had all sorts of things, right? So that, that really runs the gambit. But we also have electronics and EEG systems. This year, we're going to have a lot of electronics in there as well, as we see this miniaturization of, of technology, but also the intelligent singularity jump with AI, right, that we're seeing right now. We're seeing a lot of hardware software plays in the life sciences. So we're going to see, start seeing more and more of those, right? So we have a lot of that, right? When you, what we're doing right now is mostly doing sponsored IP from those organizations. So two things to your other question about your own personal journey towards IP uh, ownership. One is everything you learn here will translate 100% to your own journey in that regard, right? So what you're learning here, even though you might be working on somebody's IP, will be the same thing you would do for your own IP if you want to assess its own market viability. Uh, two is, I'm happy to talk to you about your own IP, even though it might not be in the program because it hasn't gotten to that point yet. I'm happy to help you with your own IP along this path and this journey too, right? As long as it doesn't impact the rest of the teams, but certainly afterwards as well. So end all be all kind of saying is like, we'll help you get your things where you need to be. Your tech transfer office uh, partnerships can help you as well. We're all in great lockstep coordination and collaboration with them. 
this is not the only program that we're going to have. We're going to have another one of these in the fall. So timeline, timeline wise, you're going to learn here, potentially push your IP a little bit further down the road, hit the next accelerator program. After that, we have an incubator program that you can go into as well. So we're along the ride with you. Um, and so that's, that's, you know, bring your IP with you, at least in spirit, we'll work on it. I promise. So I just said something. Let me let me can't, spend a few minutes tell. talking about I'm it. Gonna, I'm going to butt in. I'm going to butt in for just a second, Brian. Well, I was about to go. If you're going to talk about the network, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm to. not necessarily. But I, okay. but I, but I just want to say, if you can't tell, whatever, if you want to be an entrepreneur with whatever piece of technology, Brian's going to help you explore that. So uh, whether you bring it into this program or whether you send them an email and call them up and say. Hey, I don't want to bring him to this program, but will you help me think this through? Uh, he he will help you, and he'll get you connected to the right people. I mean, that's uh that's his passion, and uh, that's that's part of the work that he does for Biotin. So uh, anyway, I encourage you all to be. That is true. So that is true. That is true. And only one person in my life tells me to stop doing it. My wife, she keeps pulling me back, but she's just as <laughs> as a fervent fervent founder as I am. Uh, in fact, there's a, a story that I will not tell about my last major technology business where she and I were co-founders, where the technology business failed miserably, yet we got married. So, you know, there's a success <laughs> story and a failure story all wrapped into one. It's great for parties and lectures. I'll be, never mind, forming in Cincinnati next week. Uh, no, I do have a passion for this. So this is what I do. So any ideas, I can at least help get to hopefully another conversation down the road. Um, one thing I did not mention in our pres my presentation earlier that I think is really, really uh, stands to be mentioned, and you made me just think about it, is this is not the only program, right? We have this program in the spring. We have another program just like this in the fall. We have a, you know, we have a couple of programs and pa uh, panel events in the summer. We have uh, a 3686 conference that we're going to have some things in as well uh, in the fall. And then one of the most important programs to align itself with this accelerator programs is our mentor network program. So after the accelerator program, we put the teams that want to carry forward into our incubator program, which is our uh, life sciences mentor network, uh, also sponsored by Launch Tennessee and a lot of the organizations, uh, entrepreneurship research centers across the state and private and public uh, mentors that, uh, that are just you know, private individuals like myself. Uh, that are assigned to startups, uh, help them work through a stage gate process where they evolve their team. Unlike our accelerator program that's on a very specific and finite timeline, that is not. It is more ad hoc. The team progresses as, at the pace that it needs to evolve. Uh, once it reaches through each one of the gates, then it is considered to be a investable company. And that's when we start putting it in front of the uh, investment funds, both private and public, again, and the other different organizations that uh, have sources of income or sources of financial support. Uh, so that incubator program, that mentor network, is basically us giving you mentors to help you craft the rest of your business out and bring it all the way to launch. So it's not a one and done deal. It's not a high and dry deal. We really want to see if you haven't realized that by now, it should be pretty obvious. We're trying to make sure that there is a long pathway uh, or maybe it's a short pathway, but it's certainly a well-paved pathway from concept to launch to success. Right. Thank you. I appreciate your response. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, so you may think of a question after this. That's great. All you gotta do is fire off an email uh, with, let's see, I think I, I have email addresses for everybody. So I'll follow up once I have the recording link for this, if you wanna share that with anybody. Also I'll share with the link for participation form. We're gonna keep taking participants all the way till March 2nd at four o'clock. Uh, at that point, we wanna try to get everybody on at six o'clock for the IP parade. As I'm spinning a lot here. So, uh, but the idea is like get as many people in the program as we possibly can. Really appreciate you forwarding that to us. If you think of any questions or think of anything else you want to find out about us, uh, all you got to do is reach out. We'll give you the contact information. Really appreciate everyone's time. Abby, thank you for giving us a great background. You've got the 
got the history that we need to, to make sure that we understand why we keep doing this and why it's so important. So appreciate that. Uh, any closing words or anything from anybody, Abby? No, this is going to be really exciting. I can't wait to see what happens. And the, oh, did we mention there's prize money at the end for the winning teams? We did not. There's I did not know money. what the prize numbers are. Depends, but there on is how prize much, money. depends on how much sponsorships we raise, but uh, pretty much every sponsor dollar goes to um, uh, goes to the winning teams, and we divide it up. So uh, anyway. You, there's yeah, there's I should not pass money so. at the end of all this. We always mail a bunch of checks at the end of all this. So that's fun. It's not just my charm that's the prize, right? Exactly. We actually give cash money on the barrel at the end of yeah. this thing for the top for top winners. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Uh, yeah, there's cash mm -hmm. money. So anyway, that's kind of fun. Yeah. And you get a check for $750 or something at the end of all this. That's pretty yeah. cool. Pays you back a little bit. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you very much for your time. Please enjoy your weekend. We'll talk next week. See you on the IP parade next Thursday at six. Thank you. Take everyone. care. Bye. Stay classy, Seattle.